So, um, there are a lot of interesting comments on the videos I made about entropy, and um, I didn't respond to some of them. I'll, I'll, I will eventually. Um, but OK Fine made a couple uh, just now, and I wanted to read them and then um, tell you my thoughts. Uh, OK Fine 5 says, When one looks at recent 3D maps of the universe with distributions of matter and energy, the similarity to closed, smaller scale systems with definable states is eerie. With the advent of dark matter and dark energy, one has to wonder if a thermodynamic model for the universe might be possible. Um, I think it's significant that we're talking about 3D maps of the universe. Um, because thermodynamics became statistical precisely because it started to factor in time. Whereas uh, the reality of time, in other words, the concreteness of it. Whereas um, Newton's uh, mechanics were um, treating time as something that didn't... Um, by anything but a quantitative role. In other words, it was conceived of as a line leading from past to future that uh, was just as disconnected from matter as it was from space and as space was from matter. Whereas in thermodynamics, uh, it's more of an earthy, a down-to-earth science, you could say. You know, Newton's mechanics was for the motions of the stars and the planets, but thermodynamics was for the motion of matter and energy on Earth. And what they found was that they couldn't rule time, the full concreteness of time, uh, out in their experiments. Um, they were unable to create a perpetual motion machine, something that was assumed to be possible for most of the history of Western uh, philosophy and, and science. So, um, what they discovered about time was that uh, basically it's not this uninfluential um, measuring stick that, that's just space or objects in space moving. No, it's it's not. It's more than that. It's it's really about how matter and energy transforms itself now. Um, because we, I mean, to think of time as this line that runs from the beginning to the end, but, you know, for Newton there wasn't a beginning and an end other than the one that God had arbitrarily imposed. Um, and of course for Einstein, or what the result of Einstein's physics showed was that actually, you know, the universe has a beginning. It was born, and it will die. Um, it's developing, in other words. It's growing, it's moving towards, uh, away from an origin and towards a final um, death, uh, it seems. And um, this, the, the laws of thermodynamics, the second law specifically, doesn't deny, actually it, it affirms that this is in fact the case as well. So relativ relativity and thermodynamics agree about the nature of the beginning and end of time. Um, and what they call into question is the ultimate nature of what we used to think of as time. Because we can't think of it as um, a void as something that doesn't play an intimate role in the becoming, the evolution of the matter. Um, nor can we think of space as separate from matter. And we now know that, in fact, there is space time and there is God. Um, now, you know, Einstein really likes Spinoza. And, um, he was, uh, you could say a pantheist. For Einstein, nature was God, and physics was his, uh, revealing of the mind of God. Uh, that's why he did physics, that's why he was interested in it, he wanted to know the thoughts of God. Um, and, you know, d there's different 
ways of conceiving of God, and God, Einstein's God was a very specific kind, a uh, very specific conception of God. It was a, a Spinozian, Spinozian God. It was a um, pantheistic God where there was one substance, that being the creation of God, um, and it's created according to certain laws, such that um, it's all determined, everything is determined in advance. Um, when what thermodynamics seems to show us, where it conflicts with relativity, is that we can't determine it in advance, and quantum physics disagrees with relativity on this as well. Um, the universe is not a giant machine. It's not a, you know, strange dance between two separate substances as some form of dualism either, but um, it appears that it is created, it, it grows. Um, matter has certain tendencies. Um, you know, the first and second laws of thermodynamics have told us about some of those tendencies, but um, th these are the tendencies of matter in a cage, basically. Matter in the laboratory, matter as it interacts with our machines and technologies. But when you consider life, um, matter as it naturally, naturally develops, you find something utterly um, independent of these so-called laws of thermodynamics, mechanical laws, the first and second laws, um, that no energy can be created or destroyed, and that all um, um, energy tends towards greater disorder, greater randomness, less complexity. Um, so, of course, you know, the biosphere tends towards greater complexity. Um, there's a there's orthogenesis, there's movement not towards some preconceived goal, but uh, an apparent um, movement towards a purpose of some kind, a continually, um, it's a purpose that life continually gropes for, it doesn't, it's not actually controlled by it, um, it is constructing it as it goes, but there is a distinct purpose, there's a telos to um, the activity of living. So matter, when it is alive, is, it, it behaves intentionally. Um, it is conscious. It feels. And it feels because even what we thought of as inorganic dead matter also had a kind of feeling. And it was a feeling that physics has treated as nothing but efficient causation because it's a very simple kind of feeling. It's a feeling that is largely mechanical. Um, but it, it grows. It, uh, atoms are willing and molecules are willing to share their feelings with each other. And in so doing, they emerge to this, uh, into this larger organism with deeper feelings. And in fact, obvious intelligence, sentience, uh, cognitive capabilities. Um, so our picture of life is, is in co conflict with our picture of inorganic matter because of the laws of thermodynamics. And it seems to me that, uh, well actually I'm going to read the, the next comment that OK Fine 5 left. Um, an interesting point about entropy and systems on the scale of the known universe is the expansion of our universe, along with energy dispersal, dispersal and growing randomness. At some point in the distant future, the known universe will grow dark, and the energy to, to generate light will no longer be available. Darkness wins. Knowing the end of the story almost makes trying to read and understand the book pointless, since we cannot affect the outcome. So. I only have 30 seconds, but certainly the end of what we know, as, what we think of as the physical world, um, is inevitable. Um, billions of years from now, it will die a uh, heat death. It will run out of the energy, basically. It will become so spread out um, and dispersed that no interaction will be possible. But. What does that say about the consciousness that's present on this planet 